In this video, we will discuss Linework Code Sets. Linework Code Sets add additional functionality to automate linework creation. Linework Code Sets will interpret field codes entered from surveyors into figures into the survey database. Linework Code Sets are displayed in the tool space under the Survey tab. If we look under Linework Code Sets, we have one here called Sample. You can right click on this and choose Edit. If we look here, Linework codes are unique codes that you would never use in a raw description code. So make sure these don't match any codes that surveyors may use. But as you can see, you have special codes, line segment codes, and curve segment codes that allow you to basically automate line work in the field. You have things like beginning line work, continuing, ending. You can even do things like creating a rectangle or curves like begin curve, end curve, on curve. You'll see here in a second how this stuff is really cool and can automate many, many line work functionalities for you. Firstly, let's go ahead and create a brand new survey database by right clicking on the node and clicking on new local survey database. We'll call this one playing with line work. And what we'll do is we will right click on import events and choose import survey data. We're all set with the database, click next. We'll go ahead and pick three point files that are in your C colon civil 3D projects Learning AutoCAD Civil 3D Infinite Skills Survey Folder. And you can select all three. That's the really cool thing about bringing in point files. We'll go ahead and click Open. Make sure that we have this set to PNEZD for the point file format. And as you can see, we're ready to go. Go ahead and click Next. We're not creating a network. Click Next again. And now let's just verify that we have the current figure prefix database as Infinite Skills. We're going to process line work during import. And here's where you define the line work code set to use. We'll go ahead and click on Insert Figure Objects. Insert survey points and we'll click finish. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of line work that comes in automatically. Let's take a look at what's actually being done. First off, we have this figure called Curb 1. And as you can see, based upon the actual coding going on, Curb 1 BC, it's automatically generating a whole curve for us. So out in the field, what the surveyors would have done was just put a code in called OC. Again, as long as that didn't match any of their raw codes, then this would work just fine. So OC there for on curve, OC there for on curve, and so on. And then finally, we have the end curve option. Normally, you'd have to actually do all kinds of coding like begin curve, end curve, begin curve, end curve, etc., just to find that OC line work code and it automatically generates it for you. We also have one right here. If you look, this one here is just a curb one. And then this code here is OC for on curve. It automatically generated the curve without even having a BC or an EC for begin and end curve. Let's look at this one here. This is actually a building. However, it didn't close. So let's go ahead and actually open up this text file. To open the text file, right click on building.txt and choose properties. And go ahead and click on the browse button right there. This will open this file in Notepad. And all we have to do at the end of the last code is type in CLS. It does require the surveyors do locate the points in the correct order, and that way it knows to go back to the beginning. We'll go ahead and save our file, close this out, cancel that, and we'll go ahead and re-import this import event. Go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, we're going to be prompted, of course, to overwrite those point numbers. We'll click Apply to all duplicate point numbers. Click OK. And as you can see very quickly, we've just saved a little bit of time just by defining that line work code. This by far is the really coolest part of line work coding. You can actually define templates within a point file. If you look here, all I have is one figure with points on it. The other figures, believe it or not, are actually coming from the line work code set definitions and the actual point file itself. Now this will take some manipulation of the point file, but let's go ahead and look at it. Click on templating, right click properties, and click the browse button there. First off, we have the begin curve, on curve, on curve, end curve, etc. And then what you do is you define some horizontal and vertical offsets. Notice how there are no spaces in between the horizontal code and the vertical code. However, there is a space in between here. If you think about drawing a template in a cross section view, that's what we've done here. You start out with locating of the point, in this case, let's say it was TBC, and then you go in and define the other horizontal and vertical offsets, and you will actually get elevational differences. Let's go ahead and just select these three, right click and choose Object Viewer. This is a viewer that allows us to view just those objects. If we go ahead and just rotate our view here, you will see that it has actually drawn these objects in three dimensions. So we start out with the top back of curve, there's the top of curve, bottom of curve, the flange, 
and the sidewalk. Again, all from drawing one line. If we look at the survey tab for a second, let's look at the figures in here. What you'll want to notice is that although if you click over here, you will see the figures. However, because this figure was created from the one line work using horizontal vertical offsets, it creates child figures from this TBC1. Notice how it creates TBC1.1, .1, .2, .3, .4, etc. Now that you know this, you may be able to tell your surveyors to do a little bit of extra work in the field, and it'll save you a ton of time when you bring in your line work data into your drawing.